and we're about to do a lot of legs. So if you were watching me on the videos and what a good time I was having, it's because I'm, I'm doing what you're about to do. So um, the conditioning will be automatic. You will get the conditioning. Uh, the difficulty, you selected weights. We're going to do some practice reps. We're going to do some warm-ups. If, if the weight was too heavy, that's fine. Just shave a couple of reps off. It's strength training. We like that, OK? If it was too light, let's add a few reps to the end, time under tension. We're, you're going to have ebbs and flows of how shitty this feels as you go. So don't try to worry, ah, it's too heavy or it's too light. Just practice the movements. I promise you the training effect will take a hold. It'll take hold. Um, and I'll help you with the form along the way. If you're confused and you don't know what to do, you didn't get the demo, you can't hear me, just raise your hand. I'll circle around and I'll get at you from a different angle. Uh, so I'm going to try and uh, be, be projected from here. If you have to use the restroom, you can. Just wipe it down uh, when you're done. Uh, if you have to you use our, you should be bringing a full water bottle here, but if you need to refill, you can use that, uh, our water fountain, just sanitize before you, uh, you use it. Sanitize your hands. So other than that, put your seat backs and tray tables in their upright and locked position. It's go time. Story of the day. It's about a woodcutter. This woodcutter is out in the forest chopping wood. Crossing a river, he's, he's going to a, a clearing. He's crossing the river, drops his river and drops his axe in the river, and he's sad and he's pissed and he cries out because that's how he makes his living. That's how he's going to feed his family is by cutting wood, and now he's screwed. And he's in the forest crying out, and the god Mercury hears his cries and comes to him and says, Woodcutter, what's going on? What's happened? He said, I, I lost my axe in the river, and I, I'm not going to be able to feed my family. I'm in dire straits. And the god's like, you're, you're uh, one of my faithful followers. I'm going to hook you up today. Dives in the river and comes up with a beautiful silver axe. It's got a nice, ornate handle. It's gorgeous. And the woodcutter looks at these, this axe and goes, it's not my axe, God. That is that's a nice axe, but that's not my axe. So uh, I, I don't know if you want me to take that. And the, God, the God's like, no, thanks for being honest. I'll go down there and I'll get your axe. God dro drops into the river, comes back with a beautiful golden axe. It's ornate, ornate gorgeous. It's like, uh, is this your axe? Is this the axe that you? Uh, that you lost. And the woodcutter's like, no, that's not my axe either. And the god's like, thinking about this guy's like, could have just taken the golden axe, but whatever, okay. No worries. I'm going to find your axe. I said I would find your axe. Goes back into the river and comes back with a beat up, old, now rusty, disheveled uh, uh, you know, axe. And the uh, well, because like, that's it. That's my axe. That's what I need to, uh, to work and to feed my family. And the god Mercury is like, OK, well, congratulations. Here's your axe back. But because of your incredible integrity and honesty, I'm going to give you these two axes that I found in the river. You get to keep those as a reward. So the woodcutter, super excited. Three axes now. He's two axes richer goes back to the village. And uh, when he comes back, some of the other villagers see that he's got these two beautiful, fancy, uh, valuable axes. Like, Where, where'd you get those? And uh, the, the, the woodcutter says, oh, I, I lost my axe. Sure enough, God Mercury came back and uh, rewarded me with these two beautiful axes. And so the crafty villagers are like, oh, you lost your axe. And then they, OK, I got gotcha. you. So a couple more villagers go out into the woods. They throw their axes into the brush. And they, uh, and they start crying and bemoaning the loss of their axes. And the god 
uh, or Mercury, does he, does he come back with axes or he just steals it? No. Ah. So uh, the uh, god Mercury watches all this go down, grabs one of their axes, whacks them in the head, and steals their axes. And they go back to their village empty handed with lumps on their head for trying to trick the god Mercury. It's a long and elaborate story saying that, but, but, but it actually has a lot of value to today, uh, in today's world, because how many times have you, or has somebody looked at the success that somebody's having and attributed it to something obvious or superficial? Like, oh, like that guy, you know, that guy showed up and got all these awesome rewards. Yeah, but you can't see the depth of the intention, the depths of the attention, and the depths of the, the preparation, the planning, and the authenticity that went into showing up that way, and it, it creates a completely different result. A lot of times when we try to take the shortcut, you get hit in the head with an ax. All right, warriors. I had to think about that one a lot. I don't, the god Mercury, just, it's like that's a planet. It's a planet, right? Okay. There you go. We're bringing back the jumping jack warriors. I got the first five. You got the second five. The start position's the same as the end position. Go! One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Second set, go. One, two, three, four, five. Speaking of things that look obvious, but a lot goes into, kneeling hip flexor stretch. Double up your mat if you need to protect your knee. But I'm down here. And today, we're gonna use your abs to do most of the stretching for you. So, the back leg, pushing the shoelaces into the ground, tightening up the glutes, squeezing the abs, lead legs pushing into the ground, Feel that tension? You're using your body to stretch your body. I'm gonna to add to it by pushing down as hard as I can. That's gonna accentuate that stretch. And I'm gonna breathe, pushing down as hard as I can for five, four. Push harder, Aaron. Three, two, rest. Then lean forward, push that knee forward, open up that hip a little bit further. Ah, zang, very good. Now we're gonna switch. Same thing, you're gonna do an isometric hold on this side, shoelaces in the back. Lead leg pushing forward, down. Driving my hands into my thigh, pushing as hard as I can. For five, four, three. Shoulders away from the ears, Jerry, come on, get tall. Yeah, baby, so good. One, and rest, driving those the hips forward even further. Ah, so good. Okay. Now, we're gonna be on one knee. 
we're going to do our Cossack stretch. So we're going to lengthen that groin. So I'm kicking out to the side. I'm curling my toes underneath my foot. So I'm rocking back and forth, stretching that groin, sitting on that foot, getting that foot ready to squat. Nice work, Andrew. Caleb, check out Chris to your right on his foot. See how his foot's, uh, his toes are underneath his heel. Once you've done 10 reps, you're going to lift and tap. Both arms are going to stay locked out. You're really restricting that movement to the hip. 10 reps. And then you're going to switch to the other side. So loosening up our groin, strengthening and activating our glutes. So good. Yeah. Nice, Caleb. That looks good. Nice, Don. 10 reps here. And then you're going to lift and tap. For another 10 reps, keeping those elbows locked. Oh yeah. All right. So we're going to be standing. We're going to loosen up our hips and our groin all together. So we're going to get in a deep lunge. So I'm doing a long, deep lunge. My palms are in the same line as my heel of the lead leg. This knee is driving forward. The back foot is shoving back. So my pelvis is doing two different things as I sit here and stretch. Once I find that position and get tight, I'm going to take my inside arm and get long with it Keep the palm facing to the center, ride it up. Back leg is gonna stay locked out, Jerry. And then I'm gonna come parallel to the floor with that upper arm, reaching those fingertips back as far as I can. Then I'm gonna bend the elbow, come in all the way down, touch the ground, and then I'm gonna stand up, shake it, shake it, shake it off, then I'm gonna come back left leg forward this time. Palms are in line with my heel. Pushing that lead knee forward, back leg back, creating that tension. Then driving that left leg forward, pushing through, rotating back, coming parallel, getting those fingers long, reaching behind me, tucking the elbow in, coming down, Boom, trying to touch that lead heel with that elbow and it's standing up. Yeah, all right. Now everything's working. I've got my band. You've got your band. We're gonna do a couple quick exercises and then we're gonna get rolling. Here, all I'm gonna do is step into my band, create an X, I'm going to do lateral steps, 10 to the right, 10 to the left. My legs are locked. My toes point straight ahead. If you want to make it more challenging, you can pull a little harder. Elbows lead, increase that tension. Yeah. Ten to the left, ten to the right. Zang. All right, and then just for funsies, we're gonna warm up the squat too. I'm gonna do a high pull, and then I'm gonna pull my elbows under so my palms are facing up. So I'm getting this front squat position. I'm gonna pull myself down into the squat, drive up, trying to crack a walnut in my butt cheeks. Pulling down, driving up, pulling down, Driving up, 
crushing it. Literally, in your imagination. Good, feet wider for me, Chris. Nice, 10 reps. We're really trying to finish strong and exhale on the way up. Keep breathing while we're training today. That is the theme, breathing while we're training. Nice work, warriors. All right. You can put your, your band down. We're going to do the first round. We're going to do four rounds that are going to get progressively harder for our first circuit today. It's actually a superset of legs. So the first one is a power lunge. I'm going to demo the power lunge. If that doesn't work for you, let me know. We can do a speed lunge too. But the power lunge is I'm going to come here and I'm going to hop and switch. So I'm going to do five per leg for a total of 10. As soon as I'm done with my power lunge, I'm going to drop into a split squat. Lead, most of the weight's going to be in my lead leg, but I'm going to be pretty vertical. I'm going to come down, up, down. My lead leg will lock out. My back leg probably won't lock out, depending on how tall you are and your stance. But what I really care about is this posture is good. This knee is going to almost touch the ground, but you're not going to bang into the floor. So power lunge then eight split squats per side. Five reps on the power lunge, eight reps on each side for the split squat. Go, go gadget training, let me see it. Nice, Andrew, great job. Wonderful. Nice. The power lunge or the speed lunge ramps up the nervous system. The split squat creates that tension, that time under tension. One foot forward, one foot back. Perfect, Jessica. Nice, Chris. Eight reps on the right, eight reps on the left. Pushing through the palm, the palm of the foot on the front side. That back foot, you just have that toe on the ground. Okay. Now, you got your weights. What we're gonna do is, you're gonna rest at the end of your superset, you're gonna rest for about 60 seconds. I've got a clock on the wall, I've got a digital clock behind you guys that's just gonna count down. What you're gonna do is, the power lunge has no weight, your split squat is gonna have weight. So you're gonna hold both your dumbbells at your sides as you go. In this next round, you're going to load it up. If that's easy and you're feeling brave and you're not going to fall down, do your power lunge with your weights on the third round. But give it a, give a little bit more practice before you go right to the weight section. All right. When you're ready, five power lunges on each side, eight split squats. Go. Yeah. Boom. Hopping up. Doesn't have to be super. Super high vertical, just switching. Five on each side for a total of 10. And going right into the split squat. Got your weight, eight reps. Nice. So what I, I wanna dare you to keep that foot planted on the back. What that's gonna do, Jerry, is that's gonna keep the tension on the hip flexor and it's really gonna suck. That's. That's part of the training that we don't talk about, is making things suck. Andrew's like, no, you talk about it, Josh. I, I'm with you, man. So one of the benefits and the reason why people hate this exercise is because when you, when you keep the tension on the rec fam, you feel it burning on the back leg? That back leg burns. You're getting that, that leg used to decelerating, absorbing tension. It's a very valuable drill because we are weak eccentrically all of us, including me. That really burns. <laughs> Andrew's like, I know. So, now you got a little feel for that. On the third round, if you wanna get crazy, you can add the, the weight to your power lunge. Uh, I, would, I would actually recommend everybody drink water if you haven't already. Just a sip. Now, the third round is, 
This is going to be the, the most fun round because the fourth round, we're going to do an AMRAP on each leg. So uh, save your juice. But this round, again, powerful and strong. Five power lunges on each side, eight sets of the split squat on each side, keeping that back leg planted. And you can use your weights if you want to for, for either of the exercises or for neither. Ready, go. Power lunges. Boom. Yeah. Everybody's looking so good. Good depth, good form, Caleb. Split squats, back legs planted. Favoring that lead leg for the tension, for that pressure. There you go, Jerry. Yeah, Andrew. Nice, Joe G. Okay, good. Nice stance, Jessica. You can narrow it up a scotch. That's an imperial term, not a metric term. A scotch. It's just a little, just a little less than yay. All right. Now, how this game is played. This is your AMRAP. So, you don't AMRAP on speed. Speed is limited by time in the nervous system. So you only have so much fast. That goes away. So you're gonna do five reps on each side for your power lunge again. Then, what we're gonna do is, you're going to take your weaker leg and you're gonna plant it on your back foot first. Because once you exhaust, if you try to do it the other way around, it's gonna burn some, anyways. It doesn't matter which leg you choose. It's going to be hard. So I would start with your weaker leg on the back foot, but you do you. You're going to go, and you're going to get as many good reps as you can in a row. So we're doing eight. I like to shoot for double on an AMRAP or maybe even triple. But you want to end on a good one and something that you can match with the other side. So if you do 40 on your right leg, Jerry, you better be able to do 40 on your left leg, right? So, challenge yourself. You're gonna get plenty of rest so you can be a little burnt after this next set. I wanna see how far you can push it. This is a test. We're gonna do other uh, AMRAPs in the next few weeks so you'll get, you'll get a chance to come back on this and see how you've improved. But this is a good check. If you haven't been checking yourself, it's time to check in. Five power lunges on each side, and then AMRAP one side, then match it with the other. Go. So, getting those reps in with that power lunge. Training those big muscle fibers. And then it's time for shaky leg syndrome. So, if you do eight, you do eight. If you do 10, you do 10. If you do 30, you do 30. Chris, we don't have much time, so you can't do more than 50 per leg. Okay, I want you to limit yourself a little bit, but push it. I want to see something there. Keep that foot planted, both feet. That lead leg stays planted. Keep the toe on the ground. There you go, Don. Toe stays on the ground. Yes. Good. So lean forward. You're going to be leaning forward the whole time. There you go. Try to touch that knee closer to the ground. Get lower on the back leg. Get lower on the back. There you go. Zang. Nice, Joe. There you go, Caleb. All right. Repping it out. When you hit your limit, you're going to match it with the other side. Try right, AA, Ron. Yeah. Yes. Nice. See, Kenny likes to talk smack to me on Facebook, but he's not here now, is he? He's not here now. All right, Warriors, keep it up, keep it up. Keep pushing, keep pushing, Chris. Pain cave, right? You could, you could do this all day. Yes. You might feel this burn in your glutes, in your hamstrings, and the quads. All right, who here felt it on the back of their legs more? Front of the leg, front of the leg. That was like everybody, okay.
You start feeling your knees on the first rep. It's the arthritis. We, we heated it up in here for you. Okay, so your heart rate's up. Your heart rate is high. We're gonna give it a chance to come down here. You're gonna take one of your dumbbells and we're gonna do a single leg glute bridge. This is a really great opportunity. The weight you're gonna set on your hip and it's gonna activate the muscles of the hip a little bit more than it normally would. So what I'm doing is I'm coming down. I'm gonna drop it on my hip. The opposite leg I will reach up with and I'll drive to the ceiling with this, just this glute. So I'm gonna cradle it up. So you're gonna get a lot more recruitment. 10 on the left, 10 on the right. Start with your weaker leg. That way if you don't get all 10, you match it. But you just need one dumbbell. When you're done with that dumbbell, huh? Yeah. So you're resting that dumbbell on your hip like right on the hip bone, you're gonna hold it. Oh, sorry, the other leg is up. Yeah, that would be an acrobatic maneuver there. So, opposite leg to the sky. You're doing 10 reps. Then you're gonna do a lateral lunge with weight or without weight. But you could do a goblet Stand out, stand up. Don't worry, I'll keep demoing so you guys, you all can see it. Nice work, Jerry. So the foot that's on the ground needs to stay flat. Yes, the foot that's high gets high. Flatten that foot out on the ground there, Jerry. There you go. Nice, you should feel a stretch on that hip. So the leg that is down should be stretching the anterior portion of the hip. Then I'm gonna grab my goblet, stepping out, loading all my weight on the lead leg, standing up, stepping out, standing up. That's one. Stepping out. So you're gonna do eight per side. Stepping, once you step out, all your weight goes to that lead leg, and then I stand up with it. So um, it's about dropping the hip low if you need to shorten up your stance, you could do that. Boom. Back and forth. Yes. Jerry, when you step out, you go that way. So step out with your right. Now follow with the left. Yeah, it's harder, that balance, that hip, tra that, that loading transition, take a smaller stride, it'll be easier. Did you get a beach towel? I'm going to the beach. Just so you know, we, we spray, this, spray this whole place with a nuclear waste, right? You're not gonna contaminate us. Good, good kind of labor. So, we're focusing a lot on glutes and a lot on the hips in different angles today. This is really good. This is the, this is the opposite, this is the antidote to sitting. We wanna get as much of this stretching and strengthening as we can so that our hips, which are, they literally, when we sit, it, the, your hips change shape and they, they start to reform themselves so you get better at sitting. And that's where people get injured so much being active because their hips are built for sitting, not for this stuff. And so we wanna, we wanna create our own evolutionary stress. All right, believe it or not, that was a minute of rest. So you got, you owe me a superset. 10 single leg bridges with your weight on each side, then 10 lateral or eight lateral lunges. So you're on your backs. So the foot is flat. You're doing t 10 reps on the left, 10 reps on the right. Really good job there, Aaron. Keep that leg in the air, foot flat. Get that, yeah, hip up high. Chris, you should feel the stretch. Nice, Jessica. 
Don, looking good. Nice work. Great job, Joe. Yeah, feel that in the butt cheek there, Chris? Hamstring and butt cheek, pushing into the floor. Nice. That's right, Andrew. That's right. So the old adage, if you've ever seen any shitty Marine Corps recruitment posters, if you're in the Army, every post, every Marine Corps poster is shitty. But uh, they used to say, pain is weakness leaving the body. That is an old school, that is an old school mentality that is just flat out wrong. But I'll tell you what, they were onto something. Pain is the production of a neural pathway that, or the, or the creation or the reinforcement of a neural pathway that doesn't exist yet or is weak. So when you're squatting, when you're stretching, when you're doing new stuff that you haven't done before, it costs energy. It's dis it's, there's discomfort involved, maybe even a little pain if you're Jerry. And that pain, it's not weakness leading the body, it's change. It's a good kind of change though when you're doing it on purpose. Now the pain of your patellar tendon tearing off your tibia, that's a different kind of pain. And we don't want that. So we, we, we train smarter. And sometimes we train harder too. That's a very long poster. But to summarize, fuck the Marine Corps. <laughs> I'm glad we're recording this. This is gonna be like really good trivia later on in my life. <laughs> 60 hours of Josh ranting. Can you find any common theme in here? Any at all? That was round two. Round three. Bridges, lunges. Go, go gadget training. Nice, Joe G. Slow it down just a little bit. I want you to get more, more time under tension. Bring that foot a little closer to your hip. There you go. Nice, Caleb. Use the whole foot. Press through the ball of the big toe, too. The big toe is the one on the inside. Just helping. I'm here to help. I'm here to educate, motivate, collaborate. Nice work, Joe. Okay. Okay, Chris, when you step out, the trail leg will follow to the lead leg. So now that other foot comes in. So we'll do it together. See, I'm stepping. Now this leg's gonna slide in. Step out, this leg now will slide in. You're handing off the load from one, one hip to the other. Yes. Yes, nice. It's like a cool dance, right? Who could feel that in their abs though, when they do that lateral lunge? Who could feel like grabbing in their abs? That's right. You're heavily, heavily demanding of the obliques when you do the, that work. That was round three. We got one more. We got one more round. So, after this, the training gets hard. So we wanna make sure that you're fully rested, focused, okay? Last set, and hit it. So single leg bridges, weights on one, one hip, one leg.
Nice work, Andrew, all the way up there. You feel how that butt cheek gets really active on the side where you put the weight on? Even though it's only 15 pounds, right? That's like a little baby or like a dog, but it makes a difference to your hips. I don't know why I said baby. It's kind of a fat baby. 15 pounds? A yeah, one year old, maybe. Nice, Chris. Good, good adaptation. Everybody's looking good. Jerry, that looks a lot better. Notice that little, just a little shorter of the stride helps a lot. Okay, while you're resting, the next two exercises we're doing, we're gonna do a hamstring walkout. If you haven't done these before, they're kinda cool, but I'll let you see me from the side. I'm here, and I'm gonna drive up with my glutes, and then I'm going to keep my hips up off the floor, and I'm stepping with my heels, until I go as far as I can go under control, and then I'm gonna step back into the bridge. Then I'm gonna walk it out, step, 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 step. So you're, it gets dramatically more difficult the further you go. You're using your hamstring to stabilize your whole body, and you're lengthening the hamstring while you do it. So this is really good for your hammies, your back, uh, your abs. But if it hurts your back, you've gone too far. So don't force it. Just go as far as you can go. Every time you go all the way out and all the way in, that's one. We're just going to do five out, five in, a bunch of little steps, OK? Actually, I want to see everybody do it, because I want to be careful on this. I want to make sure we, we don't get hurt. And then we'll do some high pulls. So your butt is in the air. Your glutes are on the whole time. You're stepping on your heels, walking your heels out, and slowly walking your heels back. And every time you come back to the start point, that is one. You can push through the earth with your arms to give yourself a little support. Small steps. Get, that butt, get those butts in the air, warriors. Butts in the air. You can feel your abs really working. Is that hurting your back, Aaron? OK. If you feel this in your hamstrings, good. If you feel it in your butt, good. Abs, good. Nice. Look at this. No equipment needed. All you need is some creativity and a little time. Joe, Joe G, are you sweating? No. Okay. All right, warriors. Now, you're going to do a high pull. And a high pull is just a Romanian deadlift where you pop up onto your toes and do an upright row. That's it. So, I wrote down 15. Do as many good ones as you can with the weight that you have. Since everybody could get kind of a heavier weight today, aim for 10 really good ones. That's plenty. Romanian deadlift. Pop up onto the toes, and when you're on your toes, pressure's on the inside of the foot, so your ankle's not rolling out. It's tricky, especially if you've got big running shoes, like thick soles, like Caleb's got, or maybe Andrew. So be careful, keep your balance. 10 reps, let's go. Nice. Good, keep that chest up, Andrew. You're going plenty low. Don't worry about how low. Just, yeah, as soon as you feel it in the hamstrings, come right back up, there you go, yeah. Good. Now, pressure on the inside of the foot. Nice. And then you can narrow up your feet, too, just to scotch. 
Yeah. Okay. So, hamstring walkouts, high pulls. Hamstring walkouts, high pulls. I would recommend about 30 seconds of rest in between your sets. Water if you need it. That was one round. You got three more rounds. For those of you counting along at home, that was 30 seconds of rest. Five. Out, in, out, in. Every time you come back to the start point, that's one. So again, here, up, Step, 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 step. You should feel, your legs should be tired by now. You might feel the sense of fatigue building up. You might feel a little tension. You might feel some burning. If you feel that, go ahead and ignore that feeling and just keep right on training. Get, re get all those reps in. Five reps, and then 10 high pulls. So I'm gonna be hinging, popping up. Hinging, popping up. You should feel it in your calves, hamstrings, butt cheeks, upper back, lower back, biceps, hands, hair follicles, medulla oblongata. Nice. Let that chest come forward a little bit more, Don. Lean forward, baby, that's it. <sighs> 30 seconds of rest, MBD. Nice, Jessica. Pop up on your, t yeah, get a little momentum. Most of the lower body should do the work. The upper body is just an afterthought. How's the heart rate, Jerry? Good. All right, that was 30 seconds. Don's training, Chris is training. We're moving. Beautiful walkouts. Now when it comes to the high pull, I'm gently bending my knees, my butt's coming way back. I'm feeling it grab the hamstrings. As soon as I feel that grab, I'm gonna pop my hips forward, pushing on the inside of my foot, driving through. So it's all of the posterior chain muscles firing off like a rubber band at once. You good, Jerry? Yeah. Can you narrow up those feet, Caleb? Get those feet closer together? Yeah. Nice, Andrew. Where, where do you feel that, Andrew? Quads? Okay. So what I, what I want you to do on the next round just keep your head up. You won't go as low. So just try to stay level. Uh, like if you feel like your, your head has to tuck, then you're already at the bottom and you just come right back up. All right. That was round three, right? Okay. Warriors, we're coming up on last set. Yeah. And then it's just a little bit of ab work. Just a little bit of ab work. That's it.
Get it strong. Good, good tiny steps, Chris. I like it. <clears throat> Andrew, I can see the abs through your shirt, man. It's trading, baby. Caleb, this isn't soccer. You actually have to be injured. Okay, you okay, man? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Just going like this doesn't get you a yellow card. <laughs> it's, that's right. That's right. All right. Good. Less bend in the knee, Don. Just a little less bend in the knee. Yep. Yep. Feel that tension in the butt? That's where we're. That's what we're looking for. It's just a little butt tension. That's right. Great triple action, Aaron. That's perfect. Nice. Nice work, Joe. Good. Joe G, have your toes point straight ahead. There you go. Yes. Popping up on the inside of the foot. Good modification, Jessica. Also, you can rest. Nice. Nice work, Jerry. That looks great, man. See how when you go fast, they want to go out? Yeah, that's, that's a lot. Building up that soleus in the inside and that calf on the inside. Huge. All right, warriors, lucky you. It's all, all we got left is abs. And some of it you even get to lie on the ground for. So we're going to do the reverse inchworm. So the first exercise is the reverse inchworm. So I'm here. I'm going to bend over, put my hands on the ground. I'm pretty tight. I'm going to walk into a plank. And then I'm going to use my toes only. Right? So you're training your abs, hamstrings, and shoulders all at the same time. Reverse it. Well, five of those. Then you're going to go on the back and you're going to do a, a bicycle crunch. 20 on each side. One, two, three, four. Shoulders off the ground. As soon as you're done with that, you're dropping into the hollow hold. So I'm stretching out. The spine is going to be on the flat on the ground. If I'm tired, I start here like a dead bug. Get the spine, the spine flat. Then I increase the tension. As soon as you find that tension point where it's hard to manage, that's it. So you don't force it and then arch your back and hurt yourself. Go slow. Once you find your tension point in the hollow hold, 10 seconds. You're just going to breathe for 10 seconds. And then you stand up and you go back to your inchworm. We're going to go three times through. Reverse inchworm. Bicycle crunch, hollow hold. Five inchworms, 20 crunches, 10 second hollow hold. So it's at your own pace. If you need a little rest, you get rest. If you want to go all the way through and get crazy like Joe G, you can just go all the way through with no break. One of the things I like about walkouts and inchworms is you're stretching your hamstrings while you're strengthening the anterior chain, meaning you're rebalancing your hip while you're exercising, which is just great. Nice, tiny steps, Jerry. Good. Get those feet closer together for me, Chris. And Don, unlike a bear walk, I want you to be in line, as close to in line as you can. Yeah. Don, this is your new favorite thing. That's good, man. Okay. Yes. But you don't stand up. The hands stay on the ground. No, oh, no, no, no. I saw you do this. That was the, I stuck the landing. That was just the end. That. that was just the end. See so here.
when you're doing those bicycle crunches, make sure you get a long stride. There you go. That's right, Joe. Feet together, knees together. Keep them tight there, Jerry. Squeeze your shoes together. Get everything going. Yeah. Rib cage down. Flatten that spine out. Bicycle crunch. Shoulder blades up off the ground. Hollow hold. Flattening that spine against the ground. Breathing. Woo! Ten seconds. No, thirty seconds. Mostly because if you if it's if it's challenging, you won't be able to do it. If you could do it that for thirty seconds, you could make it more challenging and just do ten seconds. So. Nice, Jerry. All right, Don. All right, Joe. Don, get into a handstand position. There you go. Get your ears next to your biceps. So push your butt to the ceiling as you walk up. Butt to the ceiling. There you go. Get those feet closer together. All the way out, all the way out. Stop there. Here, here, Don, watch me. So the goal is I want my shoulders over my hands the whole time. The only thing that moves is my butt. See how my, I, my head stays over here? I don't want to do this. I don't want to come out into this position. Yeah, and then now, there you go. Keep the shoulders forward as you walk out. Shoulders stay forward though. Shoulders forward more than that. Keep walking shoulders forward. You're going the opposite direction of what I'm saying. <laughs> I can't touch you, otherwise I would just, I would have you hit me, but um, look at my head and I'm gonna, this is, this is like a, a plane in space. My shoulder's gonna maintain contact against that. My shoulder's past my wrist. And then see how I'm gonna come here up and then the shoulder stays in the same position in space and the only thing that moves is my hip comes out <laughs> we'll work on that one Don that'll be our that'll be our technical homework for your uh, for the off-season training <sighs> all right did you get all three rounds in Jerry is that two okay Andrew, you feeling nauseous? Okay, okay, good. I want you to feel tired. I want you to feel. I want you to feel exhausted, but I don't want you to feel like death. Just short of death. <laughs> what feels like death? stride Jerry get those legs long for me all right Joe G good job there keep those shoulders forward as you walk back you know what I'm saying nice Chris long stride there you go there you go warriors if you're done with your abs ab finisher bang out 10 knee grabs
Nice job on the hollow hold, Andrew. Looking good, man. Rib cage down. Looking great. When you're done with your 10 knee grabs, we're going to do 10 T-spine push-ups. Five on each side. If you are not doing full push-ups, we can't modify right now, so you'll just do an archer plank. You'll just be reaching up. Otherwise, you'll be doing push-up all the way up, push-up all the way up. Yes. That's right, Caleb. Nice, Chris. Good archers. That's exactly right. Feet wide. Good. Five per side. And when you're done, we're going to do the squats together so we'll all stand up and and finish strong. Jerry, you're not tired, are you? <laughs> it's just 10 push-ups. Good, feet wide, sir. Now for our little uh, mobility cool down. Squat, squat stance, feet shoulder width apart, dropping down, butt low, chest up, gripping the inside of my shoe, reaching high. Don, this is your favorite. Reaching high, butt down, chest up, then chin to chest, exhale, standing up. Boom. That's one. We're going to do five. Go, go gadget training. Boom. Nice, Joe. Feet flat, wider, Caleb. We want to be a little bit wider. There you go. Chin to chest. Chin all the way to chest as you stand up. Okay. Holy Toledo Warriors, you have done it. Chin to chest, Jerry. All right, Warriors, give yourselves a round of applause. All right. Like the woodsman who comes back from the, the, the woods with three axes, it, it's not what you do, it's how you do what you do. Showing up with integrity, authenticity, intention, kindness, love, honesty, a bunch of other stuff on this compass behind me. Keep being the winners that you are. Everybody. What? You see stuff, I don't hear you. It's like we're deaf to each other. It's like I specifically just don't want to listen to you. <laughs>